Hello there, boys and girls. Welcome to Lesson 10.7, Problem Solving, about shape patterns. Our essential question is how can you use a strategy acted out to solve problems? We're going to do just that. We're going to be drawing models to act it out to figure out the answers to our problems. So go ahead and take a moment to write down this essential question. How can you use a strategy acted out to solve problems? Geometric patterns are found in fabric, pottery, and floor coverings. You can see patterns in shape, size, position, color, or number of figures. Anytime I just look around, I see patterns all over the place. You should try that. Just look around and see if you could find a pattern anywhere in your house. You'll be surprised. There are plenty of them. So let's take a moment and look at this first example. It says, Sophia will use the pattern below to make a wallpaper border. What might be the next three figures in the pattern? Go ahead and pause the video and I want you to draw out your design. Now I'm sure you don't have color crayons or colored markers at home, but if you do, go ahead and use them. If you don't, it's okay for you to sketch a trapezoid or triangles. Remember, the question says, what might be the next three figures in the pattern? Go ahead and pause the video and draw them out. Does your sketch look something similar to this? These are the next three figures in the pattern. You should have a trapezoid with one green triangle, then a red trapezoid with three green triangles, then we're back to one red trapezoid with one green triangle. Hey, if you look at it closely, each one of these designs is making a parallelogram. I just noticed that. All right, let's go to the next question. So our next question says, describe a pattern. What is the next figure in your pattern? Figure one has one round circle. Figure two has four round circles. Figure three has three rows of circles. Figure four has this many circles. What would figure five be? That's our question. What is the next figure in your pattern? Pay close attention if you're not sure by counting how many are in each group. Or just think about some mathematical concepts that we've talked about before and see if you can figure out what the answer would be. Go ahead and pause your video and draw your example. All right, so here's what I made for my answer. I wrote that I would have five rows of five circles, which would equal 25 circles. Now, the reason why I came up with 25 as the number of circles is because I found a pattern. I noticed in the first example, it was just one row of one, which gave me the product of one. And then the second one had two rows of two, which came up with the product of four, my third one had an example of three rows of three, which came up with a product of nine. And my fourth one was four rows of four, which came up with a product of 16. Because if you'd count them up, you would have 16 circles. So of course, my last example would have to follow the same pattern. Having five rows of five would equal 25 circles. Remember, these are called squared numbers. Each one of these is a squared number. 25 is because it's 5 times 5, 16 is a squared number because of 4 times 4, 9 is a squared number because we have 3 times 3, 4 is a squared number because we have 2 times 2. Let's go on to our next example. My third example is this. Bryson is making a pattern with blocks. What might the missing shape be? Now let's look close. Shape 1 has one triangle. Shape two, what would that shape be? Shape three has a pentagon. Shape four has a hexagon, which has six sides or line segments. And shape five has a septagon, which has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sides. So based on what we think might happen, what do you think would be my missing number of sides for shape two? Go ahead and pause the video and draw out your answer. Now for this, I would have drawn a square for my shape number two. And the reason why is this. As you can see with shape number one, if I add two, 
I would get the answer of three sides because one plus two is three. For shape two, actually let's skip over to shape three. For shape three, if I were to add two, I would have five sides. So three plus two is five, and as you can see, I've got five line segments. Let's look at shape four. For shape four, if I were to add two to four, I would have six line segments because four plus two is six, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six for my hexagon. And let's look at shape number five. For shape number five, there are seven line segments. So it'd be five plus two equals seven. Therefore, based on this pattern, I would know that my shape number I'm looking at is two, so it'd be two plus two is four. So I could draw any shape with four sides. And I'm making them equal sides because it looks to me like all the other shapes in this pattern, those are all pretty close to being equal sides. So that's why I chose a square and not a rectangle. I wouldn't count it wrong if you said um, possibly any type of quadrilateral because really we're just looking for a shape with four sides. So my algebraic equation would be n, which means any number, plus 2 would give me the answer that I was looking for, what the missing shapes would be, n plus 2. So if I were to say what would be the eighth shape, well then you would just say, well, 8 plus 2 would give me a 10-sided polygon. I hope that made sense to you. If not, rewatch this page again. So let's go ahead and take a look at our homework questions. There are just three for tonight. Number one says, Devin made a pattern using circles. The first nine circles are shown. Describe the pattern. If Devin continues the pattern, what might the next three circles be? So look closely at what it is. We have a big, medium, small, back to big, medium, small, then back to big, medium, and small. What would the next three circles be? Question number two says this, Ashlyn uses toy pictures to decorate her quilt squares. Starting in the first square of her quilt, Ashlyn lined up her toy designs in this order. Plane, car, fire truck, helicopter, crane, and wagon. Using this pattern unit, which design will Ashlyn place her 15th square? Now remember, this is going to be square number one, two, three, four, five, six. If she repeats this pattern, what shape would be the 15th square? And last but not least is question three. Neil has three square pattern blocks. How many lines of symmetry do all three pattern blocks have? This goes back to our lesson from yesterday, all about lines of symmetry. Remember, how many lines of symmetry does a square have? And that'll help you. And remember, he does have three square pattern blocks. When you're done answering these homework questions, please make sure that you do rate yourself in the corner of your homework packet just so you can see how you feel that you're doing. Mark yourself down as one, novice, if you're not really understanding it. Number two, apprentice, you're starting to get it, but you need coaching. Number three, practitioner, you can do this by yourself, but you might get stuck on occasion. Or four, expert, you feel this that you understand it very well that you could teach it to someone. So here are your three homework questions again. Make sure you answer them carefully, check them, and be ready to share them in class tomorrow. Don't forget to bring your packet so we can check it together. And we'll be making lots of fun patterns together and um, just really understanding geometry with patterns. Have a great night. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.